guys, it's Leanne and as promised I am back today with part two of my spiffingly good book haul, The Crime Corner Edition. I have seven novels of mysterious thriller-like delumptiousness to share with you, so on we go. The first novel full of thrillery twistiness that I have is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough, otherwise known as the book with the ending that people can't stop talking about except they're not actually talking about it because hashtag don't spoil the ending. Like honestly that's genuinely a thing, there is a hashtag out there which goes along the lines of don't give away the ending but oh my god that ending. And so of course I had to get my sticky little hands on it. This novel is about Louise, David and Adele. Louise is a single mother who has made her son her world, albeit a very small and narrow one filled with no friends and very little self-confidence, after her husband or boyfriend, I'm not sure which, walked out on her and left her with their child. Then Louise meets David and she cannot believe that such a seemingly strapping and mentally healthy man is attracted to to little old her. Well, there's always a catch, isn't there? Because what Louise discovers is that David is already married and Adele is about to become her new perfect best friend. Perfect best friend. Perfect best friend. Perfect best friend. The next book that I picked up is one that I want everybody to pick up because it is necessary for future survival. This is Apple Tree Yard by Louise Doughty. I am not usually a fan of movie or TV tie-in editions, but, but, let, let, mm, mm. I didn't know that Louise Doughty existed before I watched the BBC miniseries adaptation of Apple Tree Yard. And then as soon as I finished the adaptation, I started the audiobook. And now that I'm reading the audiobook, I had to get the book because, because guys, it's, it's that good. It doesn't really matter whether you watch the miniseries first or whether you read the book first and I know strike me down with lightning for saying that but I think that the miniseries will only heighten your interest in the book so <laughs> essentially this is one of those really irritating books that you're better to know less about before you go in but I will give you a tiny blurb, tiny tiny tiny. This is about Yvonne Carmichael who is a very successful high-flying geneticist. Unfortunately her marriage and her personal life aren't really that awesome and everything is, is, is a bit difficult and a bit crap and she goes to lecture at the House of Commons one day and bumps into someone who changes her life except be careful what you wish for. Speaking of the BBC and adapted TV series, the next book that I picked up was Anne Cleave's Raven Black. This is the first book in her Shetland series and oh my lordy, I have just watched season one of Shetland which is now in its fourth season I believe and I am obsessed. This series follows Detective Jimmy Perez and Alison Tosh McIntosh who is his junior detective as they solve crimes on the Shetland Isles. And that's not easy because we are reliant on ferries. We have some very backwards incredibly traditional ways. We have a lack of technology, internet that goes out all the time. So when a local teenage girl who's known to be a little bit troublesome occasionally turns up dead on the beach not too far away from a loner Magnus Tate's shadowy, dark, dingy little croft, the community starts to turn in on itself and Detective Perez has to solve the murder whilst also solving layers and layers and layers of backstory that have been amongst this community for generations. And because I discovered not only Shetland but the fact that Anne Cleve's writing is amazing, I have picked up this one. This is The Crow Trap and it is the first in her Vera series. Vera has been adapted for TV as well but it's been done with ITV and I think that there's definitely a difference in feel this one leans far more on the fact that Vera is a bit of an oddball. So I have decided that rather than watching Vera first, I'm actually going to jump into the book series because Anne Cleve's writing is just so good. The next novel that I have here for review is Perfect Remains by Helen Field. This is introducing a new detective in a new location and I'm hoping that it's going to be a rather long series because it sounds 
amazing and I can't blurb it any better than the back does so I'm just gonna say on a remote highland mountain a body burns all that's left behind are the victim's teeth and a fragment of silk meanwhile in the hidden room of a house in Edinburgh a second woman screams into the darkness enter DCI Luke Callahan, whose first day is with Police Scotland Very shitty first day if you ask me really and the last two books that I have are both by the same author. I also received these for review and these are actually republished books. So Sally Emerson had some books published in the past, I think with Harper, but don't don't quote me on that, I could be wrong. And it's quite a few years on and these books have been picked up and reissued with fabulous covers by Quartet and I have two of them here to talk to you about today. The first one and by far the one that I am most excited about is Fire Child. This book follows our very young protagonist Tessa who from quite a disturbingly young age has been aware of the effect that she has on certain men in her life. We follow Tessa through some very shocking and very abrupt diary entries interspersed with the point of view of Martin Sherman. Martin is just as screwed up as Tessa is and he quite enjoys playing with fire so when the two of them and their very dysfunctional personalities meet all hell is bound to break loose. Again, I read the first 12 pages of this when it arrived on my doorstep. I was mesmerised. I find that it is a lot like Reasons She Goes to the Woods. So if you've read that and you found that quite disturbing, then I would probably give this one a miss. However, if you read that and you thought that Pearl was just the right mix of seriously screwed up and interesting, I think Fire Child is definitely the one for you and I will be reading it next month. And finally, I have Heat. This is about Susan Stewart who bumps into her ex-boyfriend in a bookshop in DC completely by chance and is thrown by this encounter in ways that she didn't expect to be. When she bumps into him, some memories resurface and she's not quite sure what to make of them. But she swiftly realises that that might not be the last that she sees of Philip and she begins to wonder if he's stalking her. But as all of these memories resurface, she then begins to wonder whether the breakup with him and everything that went on really went down the way that she remembered it and if it didn't does it threaten her current relationship and her young child. I am a bit funny about memory loss in books because I think it's been done to death and so if you're gonna do it you better be doing it well. So I'm a little bit trepidatious going into this one but I'm still going to read it soon and I will let you know what I think. So that was my little crimey wimey book haul. Do any of these appeal to you? Please do let me know in the comments or if you have read any of them I'd love to know what you think. And finally, is there a crime series that you really really love that I might have overlooked? I love following the same detective character through lots of mysteries. <laughs> de Poirot and I really like to see character progression through a long series so if there's any other crime series that you think you could recommend to me that I would like please do so because I will absolutely check out your recommendations see you guys later bye